Hey everyone! So I've recently found out that I have a bit of an issue with my Humvee. But no, it's not actually the Humvee's fault. If anything, it's my fault because I haven't really done anything to prevent this, despite knowing better and also having a small suspicion that it was going on. But honestly, it's not really anyone's fault. It's just something that can happen when you have a diesel vehicle like this sitting around for a long time, like this one has been before I got it. So my Humvee has what in English is commonly referred to as the diesel bug. But this actually has several names depending on where you are. Around here we call it, well, what would translate to the diesel plague. And both of those names really are quite fitting because it is kind of like a bug that is in your diesel. And also it is kind of like a disease that is slowly killing off the machine while also being pretty contagious. But I'm thinking we're going to start out by driving this around a little bit because we should pretty quickly see the symptoms of that. Then we can take it inside and I'll explain a little bit more as we try and solve this issue. Alright, so you can actually already hear it with how much it was struggling to start because the main symptom is really just going to be fuel starvation. So you're not going to get enough fuel to the engine because the first thing that's really going to happen is that your fuel filters are going to get completely clogged. And now it's cutting out on a few cylinders. But uh, let's just go see if we can actually drive this thing inside. <laughs> So that was turning into a demonstration of the wrong way to lay down a smoke screen with a Humvee. But the reason for that smoking is because of that lack of fuel to the engine, we're getting really poor or incomplete combustion and sometimes no combustion at all. So all that unburned stuff is just going straight out the exhaust. So just what exactly is this diesel bug? Actually, it's a form of algae that develops in the fuel tank in the water or the condensation that is in there. Just like if you have some stale water sitting outside for a while, you're gonna get some algae in that, and it really is mostly the same thing. But actually, let's go ahead and get a little bit of it out here so we can have a closer look at it and I can explain a little bit more. Because I think I have a good idea of where to find it. So on the firewall in the corner here, we have this little canister and that is the fuel filter. Now I already mentioned that I had a small suspicion that this vehicle was infected. Reason for that is back when I went to change this filter the first time to drain it out first, I took off this little hose down here at the bottom and I got a little bit of sludge coming out of that along with the diesel and I couldn't really see anything else wrong and it was all running fine. So at the time I kind of just brushed it off as simply being some dirt in the filter housing like you would often see on something like this that hadn't been serviced in several years. And I didn't really think a whole lot more about that until I started having the issues that I'm having now. And I remembered that and I sort of concluded, well, that's probably what's going on here. So. I'm just going to go ahead and take this hose off again and drain out what is in there and we're probably going to see some sludge coming out of there again. It was a bit of an awkward place to try and set up the camera, but I think this will do. Come on. I 
this was a nice little drink I got here. So you see that brown murky stuff full of lumps that is swirling around at the bottom there? That is the diesel bug. Now, actually, this is not a super bad case. I've seen it much worse than this. Sometimes it will look like actual algae, kind of like in an old pond or something. You get some really long, stringy, slimy stuff in here, but uh, this is not super bad. So I may have caught this early on. But that being said, I still haven't seen the actual fuel filter or even what's in the tank. So I'm not gonna get excited just yet. So where does that stuff come from? Well, it's actually already in the tank. It's in the water or condensation that is in the fuel tank. Now, normally water in diesel fuel is not a huge problem because just about any diesel engine is gonna have some kind of water separator. Typically, it's gonna be built into the fuel filter. That's also why this has a little marking over there in the wheel well on the driver's side that says drain daily. What you're doing there is just opening up that hose that I just took off the fuel filter and you're draining out the water that's sitting at the bottom of that. So where you actually start seeing this problem is typically with vehicles like this that are just sitting still for a really long time. And around here it's actually more common in something like boats because they are typically only used a couple of months in the summer and they just sit still for the rest of the year. And typically these things are sitting outside and in a climate like ours, there's a lot of heat cycles. It's constantly fluctuating between hot and cold. So you get a lot of condensation building up in that fuel tank. And because the vehicles are not moving, all that water is just gonna slowly settle at the bottom. And now you have this stale water that algae really likes. And all the bacteria that is just naturally in that water they're gonna start feeding off the biodiesel that is in the fuel. And that's when they start to reproduce and grow. And once they start doing that, they really don't stop. It can become a real mess. And once it is all contaminated, the first issue you're gonna see is what I'm seeing here is that the fuel filter is just gonna get clogged. But actually over time, it can have some pretty serious effects on your engine because these algae, as they are consuming stuff, they are also producing waste and that waste is acidic. So it will start eating away at all the fine metals in your engine, things like copper washers or copper jackets that are around your injectors and things like that. They will slowly start to dissolve. And over a really long time, it will actually get so bad that it can start damaging the metal parts and the steel parts. So all the little delicate parts inside your fuel pumps and injectors, they might see some pretty bad wear if this is just continuing for a really long time. But like I said, it doesn't actually look like it's too bad on mine just yet. It seems like I've caught it pretty early on. So what I'm gonna do is just take off the components that have the most fuel in it. So that's gonna be the fuel filter and the tank. I'm gonna empty that out and clean it all up. And I might also go in and just blow through all the fuel lines that I can easily get to. Then we'll reassemble the whole thing, put in some fresh diesel, and then we'll put in some additives that are gonna kill what is remaining of that algae stuff. Let's just go and start with getting this filter off. You don't necessarily have to take this whole canister out if you're just replacing the filter, but I'm gonna want to clean all this stuff out, so I'm gonna take it all off. There we go. This is the water separator. You can actually see that also has some of that brown goo on it. If this would focus. Now this filter has a metal cage on it, so it's a little hard to tell, but you can still see it has a bunch of that brown slime on it right there. You can also see there's some of it down here in the canister. You know what, let's just break this thing open so we can have a better look. Of course, this is not at all necessary. It's just to give you guys a better look at it. 
I've only done a few hundred kilometers with this filter, so under normal circumstances, I would expect this to look new. Yeah, now you can really see that it's just covered in that brown slime in there, so this is definitely why it was running so bad. We just weren't getting enough fuel through this. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this fuel tank down. Now, I do want to drain it first. Luckily, I don't have all that much fuel in there right now. It's a little under a quarter tank. It seems like this has a drain plug. That's pretty unusual for plastic tanks, but uh, really nice. So uh, let's go ahead and get it out. Before I do, check this out. It's kind of semi-transparent. So you can actually see all the dirt that is at the bottom of this tank. So if I remember correctly, we can get to the fuel lines from this little cover up here. Yep. Looking at it now, it seems like I have to remove my drive shaft here because the tank is around the drive shaft, so it's sitting above that, and I can't really move it over any further because the frame rail is right here, so it can only come straight down. That means that the drive shaft is going to be in the way. If I take that off, it'll also give me some better access to that breather line that is on top there because that's actually going right through the body up there. So I can't just take that down along with the tank. I'm gonna have to leave that line up there. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove this and remove that line. And we have to remove the filler neck as well. And then we can bring this whole thing down. There's not room for me down here. <laughs> Well, at least this looks pretty clean. Check out the sludge that is left in here. Look at that. That's pretty nasty. So now I can really get in here and scoop out all this gunk. Yeah, that is not what you want to find in your tank. <laughs> and actually this gasket doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, so I think I can reuse that. Nice. Look at that mud. All right, so having gotten most of the stuff out that I could get to, I'm gonna do what I was planning to do anyway, which is to put some gasoline into this. And I'm gonna slosh that around a bit because the gasoline is pretty good at dissolving that 
oily, sticky surface that the diesel leaves behind. So I'm hoping by flushing it through with a little bit of gasoline a couple of times, I can get the rest of this gunk out of here. It's already becoming some very murky stuff, so I'd say it's working. All right, so that was the first flush out. I really did get most of it. But there's still a bunch of it stuck to the bottom down there, so I think I'm going to pour some more in there and I'm going to grab a brush and just see if I can get some of that stuff at the bottom loosened up a little bit. Right now I'm pretty glad it has this big hole in the top. <laughs> Another flush with a little bit of scrubbing and look at that. That's what I like to see. So now I just have to clean that thing and we can start putting some of this stuff back in the truck. This seems to work well enough. Right, so I'm gonna put this thing back together and I'm gonna mount it in the truck. And I'm not gonna be filming a whole lot of that stuff because it really is a repeat of what I just did taking it off. And also it's kind of difficult to try and film what I'm actually doing up under there. All right, so that is all the stuff underneath put back together. Now, luckily the truck was actually not as badly infected as I feared it may have been. And seeing how little of that gunk was on the wrong side of the fuel filter, I really don't think it's worth the trouble to go ahead and get all the hoses off and all the pipes and all the fuel lines and get all that blown out and cleaned off because I really don't think there's going to be much of anything in there. So I'm just going to put that fuel filter back together and we're gonna clean it first, of course. And then we're going to run this and just let it flush itself through. I'm of course putting a new filter in here as well. See if we can wiggle this thing back in here. Here we go. So back up here on the top of the fuel tank, we have just like most of the diesels, two lines here. This one that I've already connected, that is the feed line. And this one is the return line. So on diesel engines, you're not using all of the fuel for combustion. Some of it is being used to lubricate and to cool some of the components like the fuel pump and the injectors. So a lot of the diesel is being circled through those components and then running right back into the tank. So my idea is to just hook a little hose onto this and let it run into this tray over here so that if there is some contaminants left in the system, they should come out here 
and I could discard that instead of pumping it right back into the tank and into the system. And of course the stuff that is not coming out here, that's the stuff the engine is eating, so that's not going back into the system either. All right, that should work. So I got myself some fresh diesel and I also got this stuff. So this is the additive that I'm going to be mixing in with the diesel and it's meant to kill off those microorganisms in there. Now it doesn't have to be Bellad, that's just what they had at the store I went to. There's several different brands making this stuff. But they are typically gonna tell you how much of this you should be using. And usually there is a normal dose and really that's what you should be using with just your normal refueling to prevent this stuff from happening in the first place. And that's what I should have done knowing that this wouldn't be driving a whole lot in the winter time. But also there's typically going to be an increased dose that you can use if you already have contaminants in your system. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm gonna put a little bit in here just so I don't pour the additives into an empty tank. And it says I should use three times the normal dose, so uh, that's what I'm gonna put in here. And then we just get the rest of the fuel in so we can get that mixed up real nice. All right, let's get this thing going. Now, the Americans have a lot of faith in their starter motors because they never seem to put manual priming pumps on their diesels. So I'm just going to have to be cranking on this a bunch until I get some fuel out of this little bleed screw on the filter. That's just what was left in the pump. <laughs> It wasn't quite enough to pump something up there. Oh, there we go. I was just about to say I'm gonna do it in 10 second intervals just to give that starter a chance, but uh, seems like it was only necessary to do it once. All right, let's try again. See if it can build some pressure on its own. Almost. We may have to go in and loosen some of those injector lines, but let's just give it a chance. Come on, yeah! Haha, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's really not a whole lot of return coming out of this thing. It really is eating most of it, <laughs> but that's all right. This is working as I hope. And we did actually get a little bit of dirt out of that. You can see there's a little bit at the bottom there. So that's nice. Well, everything is really already put back together up here, so all I really got to do is put the return hose back on the tank and we should be good to go. Ah, what a mess. I was just so pleased that I had done this whole project without getting the truck covered in diesel.
All right, people, the Humvee's running nice and strong again. That makes me really happy. All I gotta do now is for the next fuel refill, I also have to put in an increased dose of that additive, just to make sure we kill off the last of that stuff in there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.